Welcome to King's Kit, a special Zoom edition. So if you're watching on YouTube, you need to get in touch with me, Kath, and Making Jesus Famous so that you can join in with one of our communities and watch it on Zoom. But if you're on Zoom, why not unmute yourself for a little moment and together we're going to do some cool noises. Okay, ready? Ooh, ooh. Do you say it? I think you need to do it a little bit louder. Okay, ready? Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so first up, we have got you versus Mike. And what are you gonna do? You're gonna do it live afterwards. So, here he is. Hello, and welcome back to you versus Mike. So, this week's challenge, we're going for an old one. Spoons on a nose. So I've got a variety of spoons here that I'm going to choose out of, and we're going to see if I can, how long I can balance one on my nose for. Last time, you beat me by quite a considerable amount. amount Your nose not bigger than that, Mike. No, no, it's fine. The smaller, the better. The smaller, the better. Okay, you ready for this? Start the timer now. Okay. Um. <laughs> wait a minute, Mike. I'm sensing there was some cheating. No, I've been practicing. Look, I can do a dance. Wait a minute. What is on that spoon? Give it to me. Oh. Sticky tape. Double sided sticky tape. You are such a cheater, Michael Burke. Ready? Timer starts now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That was terrible. Okay, one more go, one more go. Timer starts now. Timer starts again. Now. Now. You're not gonna back. Now. Just give in. You've lost. Tell the no. kids. Okay. Uh, I managed to do that in two seconds. <laughs> Can you beat two seconds? So pause the video now and have a go in your Zoom group and get your Zoom group leader to tell Cap and Turbo and there'll be a prize on your way. Bye! Amazing effort with the challenge. If you won on your Zoom group, do get your Zoom leader to let me know because I will send you a prize. So next up, before we launch straight into our story, Turbo has got a bit of a challenge. He wants you to draw a shepherd. You don't know what one is? Well, great, the kids, kids, you need to show Turbo what a shepherd is. So I want you to take a couple of minutes. Um, leaders, make sure you give them enough time, um, but not too long because we've still got lots to do. So. Pause the video, draw a shepherd. And all the kids, if you're feeling that's a bit too easy, why not write all the qualities, all the skills that you think you need to be able to be a shepherd? And then make sure you show each other at the end. Okay? So pause the video and let's draw some shepherds. I really wish I could see some of your fantastic shepherd drawings because I love to draw. But right now we're going to find out why the Bible talks about shepherds. The Bible actually says Jesus was a shepherd. So in the Bible, John chapter 10 verse 1, let's take a read. So Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. You remember the Jewish leaders who made people follow the religious laws? He felt love towards them, but he thought they were a bit lost and alone. A bit like sheep, maybe. Jesus wanted to let them know that he was the only one that could lead them to God, that could forgive their sins. So he tried to explain it like this. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd loves and cares about his sheep and knows each one by name. The Good Shepherd is ready to lay down his life for his sheep. A hired man, not a supply shepherd, he's not really a shepherd, he's just trying to earn a little bit of extra pocket money. The sheep mean nothing to him. If he sees a wolf come in, they will run away. They will abandon the poor sheep 
because the sheep don't mean anything to him. He thinks his own life is more important. That supply shepherd, or hired man, can often be seen counting his money, while the sheep are left running around on their own. He's practically taking a nap on the job. If one of the sheep has an accident or finds some danger, by the time the hired man notices, it is too late. The poor sheep. But the good shepherd never lets his sheep out of his sight. He has promised to look after these sheep. He's committed and the sheep know that they belong to him. They know his voice. The good shepherd will stick by his sheep through the good times and the bad. If anything was to hurt the sheep, the good shepherd would stand in front of his sheep and act like a shield. He is their defender and he will give up anything, including his life, to save his sheep. Because the good shepherd loves the sheep more than he loves his own life. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. I will sacrifice my life for the sheep. And we know that Jesus did give up his life for all sheep. Or if you want to say it a different way, for all sinners, us. We are the sheep in this story. For those who listen and follow him, Jesus gave up his life. He gave it up as a payment for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. So let's let Jesus be our shepherd. Let's follow him like we are his sheep. There's going to be a couple of questions that you can chat about in your group, but that's bye for me for now.